Hello, Steve Mills here and welcome to the Results Podcast. It's great to be here again sharing with you some more tried, tested and proven ways you can grow your business, grow yourself and become more effective. If you're watching this on YouTube, then welcome. It's great to have you here. And uh, I'm really privileged today to have uh, another fantastic guest on my podcast whose name is Sarah Farmer. She's from a company called ENR Consulting Limited. Uh, she's an executive coach and welcome Sarah. Thank you ever so much for your time in being here. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me and I'm honoured to be asked. So thank well, you. That, that's great to hear. Thank you. So why don't we kick off just tell people a little bit more about you and what you do please. Okay, do you know, this is a really good question, because if anybody has used LinkedIn, or they're trying to put, you know, their little few lines about themselves, it's so hard to capture what I do in in a couple of sentences, but I've drilled it down to this, I make or help people make the seemingly impossible possible. And and it's as simple as that. No, it's, it's what is impossible in their minds that is the interesting bit and that can range from getting a new job to getting a promotion or um, dealing with a boss that's treating them let's say unwell Um, it can be anything but it's this it's all about helping people go from where they are now to where they really want to be whether they believe it or not yet figuring out what's in that gap in the middle really digging into the causes of that and then helping them expedite that journey from A to B with the mindset, the skills, the support, the inspiration, the fun. Um, and that's what makes it happen. That's what I do. And I absolutely love it. Yeah. I, I, do you know, I'm the same. I love doing what I do. If I won the, the lottery next week, I, I'd still be in work the, the following week. I might not do everything. Would you? I, I <laughs> would you? Do, I, I would. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Why would I give up something I love? So no, uh, I'm the same. Yeah. I, I, it's, uh, it's, um, it, it's actually becomes, it's a, it's not a job. Um, no. And I know people often say this, oh, if you, if you love what you do, it doesn't feel like you're working. Well, yeah. It is true. And there are days when I really feel like I'm tested. Yes. But you couldn't work the hours that we work as, no, no, as no, solopreneurs, yeah, yeah. You know, small business yeah. owners and not love it. I, th- I think anybody who's got a job that they love doing are just the luckiest people, you know, because uh, we spend so much time doing it. And particularly when we run our own business. I remember a very good friend of mine said to me, when you run your own business, you only have to work half a day. And he said, then the good news is you get to pick which 12 hours those are. And, and <laughs> I was going to say, hold on a second, we catch here. Yeah, I'm yeah. not working. I'm not yeah, working well, four I hours that, a day. You know, I thought, what's he on about? And uh, yeah, so true, true is that you know, for 25 years, probably 12 hours a day. I don't know, but anyway. Um, but you know, you just you just said this thing about we're, we're lucky, and this is the bit that I figured out a while ago that it isn't luck. It's actually you decide, you make it happen, and yeah. a lot of people that I see are feeling unlucky. Yes. And when we look into where this is coming from, they have created this environment because they feel they haven't had the opportunity. They feel um, they didn't have the money. They didn't have something has got in their way. And when you dig sure. into that, it's very rarely true. I mean, you look at some of these ultra, ultra successful multimillionaire entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. They come a lot of them come from nothing. Yeah. And they have found a way, and I no, absolutely no education, that. no university, no money, you know, and, yeah. and often they've failed, um, you know, time and time and time again. Yeah, and, and that's why they succeed because they just absolutely. keep going, you know. And uh, it's having yeah. that, it's having that um, uh, courage to step out and go, I'm going to do whatever it takes. And and my my the favorite thing I hear is yes, but. Yes, but whenever I'm hearing yes, buts, I just think you're just block. You're blocking it again. Take away the yes, but and go. Okay, and what can we do about it? And uh, yeah. I'll always remember you say that yes, but I remember listening to Tony Robbins, who I know is somebody we both uh, sort of admire, and he said uh, people who say yes, but usually have a big one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd absolutely. like to go to the gym. And they're sat but... on it. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not out there doing things. But uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about amongst many uh, today is coaching. And now I know you know that I come from a background as a, a, a ping pong player, uh, having played table tennis at international level for, for 10 years. And uh, and coaching was a real, you know, it's, it's like just a no brainer. I think in any sport and every sport, you need a coach. And often, you know, a, a top level, particularly in, you know, wealthy sports, shall we say, like football and tennis and golf, you don't just have a coach, you have multiple coaches. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, listening to Ivan Lendl, uh, who uh, once said in an interview that he's actually got six coaches. Uh, everything from mindset to serving a, a guy who was his his, his full time job was was helping Lendl improve his serve. You yeah. know, just a small part of his game. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, I think he took professional sport to another level. Um, but uh, what, what do you think? Why is I mean, what is coaching, and why is it so important? Why why do business people need need coaching? Do you think? Um. I mean, you've described it so well is that, you know, that you're talking about Lendl and, and these, every bit of his job to be the professional, the best that he could be, required more than himself. He yes. was literally the vessel that yes. did it. But actually, to be our very best, we need to see it from another point of view. We need to hear it from another point of view. There's um, somebody posted this morning something which I've just written down because it's it, it's perfect for today's conversation, which is no man is an island entire of itself. And this was from a 17th century poet called John Donne. And it just hit it. I just saw it this morning. I went that that is why you are never as good as you could be on your own. And the reason for that is, is the way we see things, the way we believe things to be true, the way we respond to things are just the way we believe them to be. Mm. This isn't the truth. This is no. part of the truth. Yes. So in coaching, what we do, well, what we do, what I do, and I'm hoping what other great coaches do is they help people see what they're believing to be true what they're doing at the moment, what they're reacting to and their behaviours as a result of that have an impact not just on themselves, but on everybody. And that can always be better. Yes. It doesn't matter how good you are. As a coach who has coaching and who coaches people regularly, I can always be better. I'm always learning, always reading. And if you believe that you are good enough and that is your lot, then you scare me. Because uh -huh. no one... Wow, no that's one. really profound. Yeah. And, and no, so true. Yeah. yeah, no one is the best. No. Yet, because better is always there. You can always be better. And the other thing is, is this isn't just about being better and doing better for yourself. It's about the effect it has on the rest of the world. And if anybody looks at my website, I've got this massive mission of changing the face of leadership. So I, I work with individuals out of leadership roles as well they might be looking for a job they were leaders they might be just professionals that are struggling with something I do all okay. of that as well but my my main aim is to change leadership so that everybody gets treated with the respect that they deserve because when that happens everybody's more fulfilled everybody's happier and healthier anxiety mental health issues go down and results go up we see it all the time. Every great book mm. you read, good to great, you name them. Yep. It shows you where you've got the emotionally intelligent leaders at the helm looking after themselves first better yep. and then looking after others better, results better. And it's phenomenal what can happen. You know, there's um, a particular organisation I've just been working with. And when I started working with them a couple of years ago, their, their business was valued at around 5 million. Now I was one of those cogs in the wheel with, that worked with them for two years and it's right. 30 million and they've just sold it. Wow. So a lot of what happened there was upskilling, confidence, um, a whole range of things, starting with the leaders down and it changed everything. Yeah. I was one person, I was, you know, I was helping them serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or serve. That, uh, that, 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 that's a good return on investment, isn't it? By any Not off. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, actually, this is a really good thing. People go, oh, I can't afford coaching. Yeah. It's you such... can't afford not to, in a way, can you? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't afford... When, when, when COVID hit, 
and all my work stopped because everything everyone just stopped because we were all in fear yeah um I suddenly had no money coming in and I'm a pretty good spender so I hadn't got any <laughs> reserve um and I had to go on a course that was going to cost I didn't have to I wanted to go on a course that was going to cost me two thousand pounds uh-huh. I found the money it changed everything yeah. it was worth every penny um and I see people go, oh, you charge how much? Oh, no, I can't afford that. Yeah. But never going to. You no, were no, never no. ready. It, it, it's funny, isn't it? People are willing to invest in cars and holidays and, and clothes and you name it. And yet we, we so many people will not invest in themselves. Ultimately, that's what they're investing in. And, uh, yeah. you know, um, you know wh- whether that's just a, a few hundred pounds to go on a training course or a, a more in-depth uh, program. I, 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 like you, have spent many, many thousands of pounds. I, I've worked it out and it's quite scary that it must be somewhere in the region of a uh, 150,000 pounds that I've spent over the last 25 years, which is, you know, just mind boggling. Well, it is mind blowing. And I remember when we first met, I remember you saying this to me and I I got off the uh, the call after that thinking, how much have I spent? And I worked it out and it's around that figure. Yeah. When you look at everything over the last 20, 30 years that you've invested in. Yeah. um, And not all of that I've had to pay for myself. This is the other thing is that a lot of the leaders I work for who are in situ will go, well, I'll see if my boss will pay for that. or see if you're." And I just say, you're not ready then. No, because if you're waiting for someone else to pay for this, yes. what does that tell you about what you believe uh, your, about yourself, your, your worth, yeah. Yeah. your desire, yeah. and then like your ooh, commitment, your commitment, it, you know? Yeah. It, so I um I often I will push back at that point and say when yeah. you're ready to pay for this, I don't care who pays for it, but when you're ready to commit to pay for it yourself, wherever the money comes from, then I'm ready to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. I always remember a very good friend of mine called Peter Thompson, who um, said that uh, when he when he first started off, he used to charge sort of three, four hundred pounds a day uh, uh, as a consultant and an advisor. And uh, what used to happen is people would hire him for a couple of months. And then at the end of that, they'd say, oh, no, this is not working and uh, and uh, uh, sacking, basically. Uh, now he said he charges five grand a day and they take what what the notice of what he, he said and uh, and it works and he does it because when he was charging 200, 300 pound a day, they, they just paid it. And didn't it was do too anything. easy. Yeah, it, it's it, too it's, easy. I think that's what a, a coach does as well, isn't it? As well as the advice. It's just, you know. One of the things that the feedback that I get is is that I, I was talking to a client the other day and they said that, um, you know, um, that they were up until two o'clock in the morning trying to get something finished because they had a meeting with me for the following day. And they knew that I'd be giving them a hard time if they didn't. <laughs> and I felt a bit harsh about that. But, you know, it was a good thing because well, you're you know, driving accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely. driving accountability. And there's yeah, there's something to be said. There's one of the courses I went on a while ago was um, it was about how to it wasn't just about this, but there was a constant message of raise your prices, raise your prices. Yeah. And there were some people on there who had never coached before in their lives and they were somehow charging, I don't know, 500, 600 quid per session. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, that won't last because you can only charge that sort of money if you deliver the goods. So yes, it helps people buy into you and they think, God, you're serious and you only get the serious people. But if you haven't got the skills and the knowledge and the experience and the proof to back that up, you are going to fall flat on your face. So my my theory is start at a reasonable level to grow your business. And then when you've got your stripes, then you can earn the money that you deserve. But for me, and probably, I mean, I know we need to earn money to live, but to me, money is a, a side effect of what I do. Yes. And yep. if people are thrilled, their lives are changed, they are doing things they never thought possible. That feeling, I can feel it now, that feeling, it, it, you can't put money on that. Um, and thank you for paying me. You know, that's that's nice. That's happened. Yes. But the yeah. feeling you cannot pay for. Yes, I agree, I agree totally. And, and of uh, course, it's not just about me, it's about their feeling as well, but it's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's such a great feeling, isn't it, when you, you, you hear 
uh, people saying, you know, that that your your work has had this profound effect effect on them. You know, they've, they've, for me, it's you know, it's often about you know improving sales and marketing and growing their business, which I, I know is you ultimately because uh, you know if they become better leaders and and better at, at running and managing their business, then then that is a a consequence of it. And your example of growing from two to thirty million is. Uh, is a phenomenal achievement you know that, yeah. that you were a key part in you know well, so. it was five it was five to thirty but who cares oh, sorry well, okay. i mean who cares when you get yeah, to 30 well. who gives a damn <laughs> yeah um, yeah exactly and, and you know with with the the i used to do a huge amount of of training um and less coaching i switched it around because um the two go very well together when people take your courses if the leader of the organization isn't following that up and making sure that it's embedded um, and they haven't got the emotional intelligence or the desire or they don't think they've got the capacity to do that, the money they've spent with you can be wasted. So yes. the two go absolutely hand in hand. Don't bother wasting your time on a huge training course and have a crap leader who just ignores that it's happened. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You might as well go and buy a car, which is yeah, fun, yeah. obviously, yeah. but it's not going to help your business. Not really, no, no. <laughs> I remember listening. To, um, are you aware of a book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber? You know no, that? but I want. To, I, I like the sound of it. E-myth. Yeah, yeah. The entre- entrepreneurial myth. Okay. Uh, Gerber says that people who go into business, they're going because they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to run their own business. Yeah. He says it's actually a myth. They're not. He calls it their technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what one of those is, but he says he says basically they're they're technicians, and so what he me- meant by that is that they're good at doing the work of the business. So typically, a, a garage mechanic opens their own garage, a hairdresser opens their own hair salon, an accountant opens an accountant's yeah, garage, yeah, so on, believing that because they're a good technician, they're good at doing their work. You know, they're a good accountant or hairdresser. Uh, that they can run a business that does that work mm. and as Gerber says it's simply not true they, they, oh, they don't no. know about <laughs> about marketing and selling and HR and management and leadership and finance and you know uh, debt collection and you know I could go on and on and on it's they're, an they're absolute yeah all those things and it, it's a great way of looking at it I think and I think it's so true you know. It really is true. And, and I mean, you, the thing is, when you're when you start out, you have to earn enough money in your head to be able to pay for some of these things to be done. Sure. But then if you keep waiting for that to happen, you're so busy doing the stuff that you hate. For example, I used, oh, I had I worked with an accountancy firm to start with. It was the it was the most ridiculous seven years of my life when I first started <laughs> working with an accountancy firm that made me fill in these whopping spreadsheets. Well, as soon as you give me a spreadsheet, I'm asleep anyway. <laughs> Keeping track of everything I'd spent, what it was for, and I didn't ever revolutionise that process until seven years into my business, which was literally a few months ago. And it's changed my, I mean, I now use invoice to go. I now have a virtual assistant who's actually my operations manager. She's amazing. And so now I I have, I invest in different things so I can spend my time on the things I am good at, which is helping people achieve what they think is yeah. impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but if, making if you're, that if you're busy, and, busy doing your bookkeeping and invoicing. Oh, and... God. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you are a bookkeeper and you're doing those, I applaud yeah, you it's yeah, just yeah. not my bag and you would no. probably hate coaching but you know we, we've got to use we've got to use our time wisely to be an entrepreneur and anybody who goes in and I think actually with the with the impact of the the pandemic so many people have become entrepreneurs or set up their own business and I wonder how long it will take for that oh this is really easy you have all the time off in the world you can take holidays when you want feeling actually goes yeah, it's yeah. really hard. <laughs> uh, you, you know that that again is a consequence of the uh, pandemic, isn't it? You know, lots of people lost their jobs. Yeah, uh, and they you know struggling to get uh, new jobs, so they think, I know, I'll set myself up as a you know fill in a the gaps. Yeah, most of them are now coaches, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's... you know what? Good luck to them. Something is really funny that I read in a book by Rich Litvin, who's a who's a pretty well known coach from the states. Uh, and it made me laugh was that um, even if you just talk to a lamppost, you can feel better. So 
uh, everybody that's just started out as a coach with no training, no experience, whatever, you're as good as a lamppost if nothing else. Um, and it, it, to be honest, that can be pretty good. Sometimes all people need is somebody just to talk to. But if you want life changing, you've got to know your onions. You've got to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the impact of coaching has been proven to be up to around a 45 percent increase in productivity, whatever that means to you. Um, so it could be you're looking for a new job. If you reduce the time to get that by 45 percent, what would that mean? If you reduce the number of interviews you went to by 45 percent, if you could improve your uh, the way that your business is running and operating by 45 percent, how many millions would that make? It's incredible the difference between a good, you know, a coach and a really good coach mm, who knows mm, stuff and yeah. has got proof that it's good, but it can be really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Makes a big difference. Yeah, I, I agree totally. And uh, I, th I think the same is true in the world of, uh, of marketing. You know, there are lots of marketing advisors out there as well, you know, and marketing companies. And uh, I've got a sign on my wall in my office and it says, uh, it's not that you're doing the wrong marketing. It's more likely you're doing the right marketing in the wrong way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that that's really true of most businesses. They do the right stuff. Um, you know, they, they, they know roughly what to do, but they don't really do it. You mentioned LinkedIn as a prime example. You know, most people are on LinkedIn, but most people, uh, I'm going to say 99% of people don't win any business from it. That's because they're doing the right marketing, but they're not doing it in the right way. Why is that? Well, they, they either don't do anything because they're too busy and don't have time or they don't know what to do. And, and it's as simple as that. So that's a, another area. That it's a people, massive, yeah. People need help in, you know. You, why Absolutely. would you know? You know, because you're a, an accountant, you know. You, you when, spent yeah, when, 20 years understanding how to do that. You haven't spent 20 years understanding how to do LinkedIn. Now, you don't need to, 20 years, but you need to have some training so you know and understand what to do. You really do. And um, something else happened with the pandemic. So I spent my two grand on this one course um, yeah. and then I spent another several hundred pounds on learning how to use LinkedIn. I'd never used it before. I was a voyeur. I'd okay. occasionally pop someone. I had no idea how to use it. And I am getting better and better and better at it all the time. I would never right. teach anyone to do it. That's your bag. But uh -huh. I know how to do it for me. And, yep. and although we say it's because they're too busy and they don't know how to, what I found with my clients who I'm now encouraging to go on it is they're scared because yeah. they don't know how to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're scared because they might be wrong, which means they've got self-limiting beliefs. Get a coach. Um, they don't know how to they come and see you or they whoever the coach or the trainer is going to be but people that refuse to to invest in themselves to understand how to use that one of the most effective network working tools in the world right now for business well where's your head what are you yeah. doing go oh, yeah. go and learn how to do it because once you've learned how to do it everything starts to change but the biggest learning for me was to stop expecting business from it I thought you went on it and you pitched for business. You don't. My yeah. mindset now is I'm just going because I can't. My diary is now full pretty much for the whole year. Brilliant. Oh, Thank wow. you. Very. Yeah, I'm really, really blessed. Yeah, um, it can change. Who knows? But it's busy. But I can't now help more people more of the time unless I give it through another channel. LinkedIn is one of my channels where I, I now give, 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 give. I teach, mm. teach, teach, teach. I help, 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 help. And I don't expect anything in return because it makes me feel good, which is my return. What happens is people do get in touch and say really lovely things or they ask you for help. And that's the way around it should be. Yeah, I, I agree totally. I, I think, you know, um, in, in, in the modern world that we're living in, um, both pre and post pandemic, uh, we, we, we really... Uh, we, we need to demonstrate our expertise, I think, it, it, because it is so competitive. There mm. are so many people out there, you know, back back when I was a, a younger man, you know, I had three choices of ice cream. You know, now I've got heaven knows probably 200, you know, Ben and, and why Jerry's has rum and raisin? Ice. Why has yeah. rum and raisin become a thing? I mean, <laughs> who wants that? <laughs> Sorry. So we got so much choice in virtually everything that we do. And um, 
you know, I, I think because of that, we need to be, um, you know, uh, certainly different in, in, in a, a, what we offer. And, uh, you know, we need to stand out from the competition, you know, and uh, that's so important in doing so. And, so not, and not be scared of giving stuff away. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I can give stuff away all the time, but I know that the real, the real changes that happen with a coach happen when you are with the coach. Yes. It's not what you learn or what you no, read. No. That's it's, enough for some people, but it's not, not enough for me. It's most. not watching a few, you know, YouTube videos and no. thinking that, you know, how to do something you you, you need that you, you need, need that, more. that coaching yeah. so so what are the you know i don't know three or four biggest mistakes that you find that you know working with people that they're making be that in leadership or um you know in in business generally <laughs> the biggest one well there's two okay because i look at things from two camps one is i work with some really strong-minded ego-driven leaders who think they're right, that's the okay. first mistake, <laughs> is they think they're right. And yeah. what's fascinating about these ones is some of them actually absolutely genuinely believe they're right. But when you dig down a little deeper, there's usually a fear there that what if I'm not right? Okay. Then what does that say about me? So the first thing is you're not right. And if you're not right, that means someone else might be, which means you need to listen and ask and uh -huh. listen and not be afraid to get it wrong. Okay. So that, that's a biggie. The other one is believing you're, that you're the only person that suffers with imposter syndrome. I don't know many people that don't at some stage. And there's an interesting balance between imposter syndrome and um, having a humbleness about you. So with with clients that come in and they are beyond humble they are so down on themselves that i i can't i shouldn't i wouldn't i'm no good and i have to say i'm good at that because i've come from there i've come from a childhood where i was told you'll be nothing you're a waste of space not by my parents by school okay. uh, you can't yeah. do this you can't do that you'll never get anywhere and i believed it mm -hmm. so i understand that feeling and, and it starts very young so the big mistake is believing that because you haven't yet means you can't. you can't yes and actually you asked me for five but i'd say those are the two the two it's, okay there are more there's more than one right yeah and it may not be yours yeah right and the other is you can if you want to yeah and both of those take time energy input learning desire to make that change it's it's about just raising your standard isn't it you know i think you know it's about well, it is but you can't do that until you feel, i tell you what the, the biggest difference is when people look at getting results i mean you've got results mastery behind you so this is brilliant you know when you look at getting results you're very much about the actions that you take the skills yes. that you've got which is brilliant we need those i'm much more about I do that as well, but not your stuff. I do the I do the leadership training, communication skills training. There might be some overlap. I don't know, but what I work on first is the mindset because your mindset drives mm -hmm. your actions. So yeah. if you get people onto your course going, I'm not really interested. We know the result won't change. No. Some people go, Why aren't my results changing? I've done this course. I've done this course, and we look at it. It's because the mindset's wrong. They don't mm -hmm. believe in themselves. Yeah. They don't believe it was worth it. They can't. They're scared of implementing it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about well, mindset and action. Absolutely, you're absolutely on, the, on the nail there. That is so true. Uh, and I think true of, of everybody at times. You know, I, I've certainly been there with certain things in my life. Oh, me too. And, and I, like you, when I was a, a kid at school, I, was, I, I just wasn't very good at anything in, in the truth. Somebody once said to me, why did you play table tennis? Because I, I was rubbish at football. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the truth you it was found the only your thing I was though, any good at. Yeah. and for <laughs> I me I mean I, I, was, I was I wasn't the I wasn't the academic I couldn't be as clever no, as my sister no, so no. I was good at playing the fool and being funny yeah and I was really good at that yeah 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 but that isn't going to get you very far no 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 <laughs> but uh, clearly we've both uh, we've done all right uh, we, we've done all right we have yeah <laughs> indeed indeed so um we're just about coming towards the end of the um uh, interview today so Sarah if people want to find out more about you and maybe work with you or at least have a meeting to discuss it further what what would they need to do what's the the action to do 
Okay, first of all, if you're not following me on LinkedIn, please do, because I give away loads of free stuff and knowledge and information and inspiring yep. stories. So do that. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, the other way to get in touch with me is via my website, which is www.emr-consulting.co.uk. And on there, you can have a little look around and see what I'm about. I'm adding to this now more and more. I'm going to have more customer testimonials on it and all sorts. It's just being revamped. Um, but there's also an option there to book a coaching discovery action session. And these are 30 to 40 minute sessions, which are free, just helping you understand if coaching is right for you. And I will give you some coaching so you can experience it. But then if you think I'm the right person to help you, then we can have another conversation about what might be possible. Maybe there'll be a program coming up that they can work on with me. Uh, sorry, work with me on. Or if I have some one to one spaces, then those will be opened up to them as well. Fantastic. Uh, that, that, that's great. And if anybody wants to know more from me, um, you know, the same thing applies. Connect to me on LinkedIn. Uh, website is www.steve-mills.com. And uh, again, loads of stuff there for people to uh, take advantage of. So uh, thank you ever so much, uh, Sarah. It's been sure. fantastic. Um, I've certainly learned a lot myself. I'm sure everybody has. Um, I wish you every success. And uh, as Sarah said, you know, let's take action, you know, get yourself a coach, you, you know, if it's uh, something Sarah can help you with, fantastic. If it's more sales and marketing, you know, get in touch with me. But if it's not either of us two, just find somebody. Find, else. Somebody. find somebody, yeah, there's, there's loads, loads you know, of that, people that, out there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's it. Thank you ever so much. Thank again. you. And, Thank uh, you for having me. Speak to you all again soon. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.